So now you can literally be whoever you want to be and star in every role of your AI films using these tools. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to make these yourself. So Hicksfield just released Recast Studio. And let me tell you, you can't believe anything you see anymore. So hey, I'm Khalil from AI for Real Life. I've been over on TikTok for the past year cranking out many tutorials and helping people understand the newest AI tools and how to actually use them in the creative workflows, especially when it comes to image and video. But a lot of people have been asking for full tutorials, a breakdown into what I've been doing and showing over on TikTok. So I decided to put on my big boy pants, jump back over to YouTube and start doing these long form deep dives. Here I can take my time and actually walk you through the process, give you a deeper look at what I'm doing instead of trying to cram it into a couple of minutes. So let's talk about how I made these videos and what tools were used. And as you're watching this, if you find any value in this, go ahead and give a like, subscribe, comment, do all those things that help me know that I'm heading in the right direction. All right, so let's dive in. All right, so we're in here now and the clips that you saw at the beginning were made using Hicksfield's new Recast Studio feature. This is one of the newest tools that they've just released and here's how it works. So you head over to Hicksfield.ai and you click the video section and then you choose Recast Studio. Now, here's a quick note. They actually have two recast options. And the first time I tried this, I ended up in the wrong one. And one of them swaps your character out directly into your own background. Like it takes the character that you have and then puts it into your background, just like I'm sitting here. And that wasn't what I wanted because I was trying to compare it to what was happening in Recast Studio. So the one you're looking for is you go from video down to Recast Studio. And that's where, in my opinion, the real magic happens. All right. So... Now that you're in Recast Studio, there are a few main sections. So there's the character section, and this is where you upload your own photo or you choose from one of their preset avatars. And they've got a pretty wide selection right here. It's pretty cool. And then you have a voice section right here. You can pick from built-in voices like Zara or Hope or upload your own audio. You can even use custom voices for consistency across different projects. So that's a pretty cool approach that they have. And one thing here that I really like is that they give you multiple translation choices. You can dub the scene into a different language. I mean, there's not a ton of them on here, but I mean, it's still an option. It's pretty cool. And then the last thing that you see here is you can actually swap the background out for one of theirs, or you can just have a green screen layer. All right. So for my test, I uploaded a short nine second video where I did a couple of different clips, but let's talk about this nine second clip really quick. And you can look at it right here. It shows you that the options are five to 15 seconds and it doesn't show you this part here, but it has to be under 40 megabytes. So what I realized was that at 1080p, that works out at 4k, if it's over like eight or nine seconds, and it's probably going to be too big of a file. So just think about that while you're creating. So then I chose one of the preset characters and I paired it with the hope voice because that one seemed like it went best with my character. So from there, I selected a cozy, minimal background because it seemed like that would go great with what we were saying here. And then I hit generate. So that nine second video cost 39 credits. And we'll do the math on this later, but it took about, I, I'm going to say about seven minutes to render, but I guess this probably depends on how much traffic they have going to the servers and all kinds of things. So here's the result. Go ahead and check it out. So Hicksfield just released Recast Studio. And let me tell you, you can't believe anything you see anymore. <laughs> That's pretty wild, right? So the lip syncing is surprisingly solid and it's better than what I was getting, at least from Runway Act 2 or some of the other models. But you let me know in the comments if what you're doing with Runway Act 2 is much better than you're seeing here or vice versa. So I went ahead and ran another generation just to see if it was a fluke or it's actually working out because these are just one pass generations. These aren't just reruns. So let's go ahead and check it out. I truly believe that in the very near future, there's going to be one person that acts out an entire film. Just watch. I mean, it's not bad at all based on especially where we were just a few months ago or even just a few weeks ago. So that was just my initial test with Hicksfield Recast just to see how it worked. And I was actually pretty impressed by it. But when I posted this to TikTok, a lot of people were jumping in and saying, bro, this is just Juan 2.2 wrapped in their own interface with a bunch of really good marketing. And I mean, I was kind of thinking the same thing myself. I was like, this is probably WAN 2.2 because from what I understand, WAN 2.2 is open source. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that. But honestly, I thought they were doing exactly what they were saying. They just wrapped it in their own interface and put it out there and charged a little bit on top, which 
this is an aggregator sort of platform. So it makes sense, right? Like that's how they make their money is by putting all these cool tools on the one site. I was cool with it, but I wanted to check it out for myself. So I went on a search for WAN 2.2 and I didn't realize that I had just been using WAN for a couple of other projects just a couple of weeks ago to test out some other tools. But when I did the search, it brought me to uh, another WAN website, which was not the original one, I should say. And it was a lot more expensive and I was kind of confused, but then I dug a little deeper and found the regular WAN site, which looked familiar after I saw it again. So anyways, that's where we ended up was WAN site. So be careful when you're looking and searching for WAN. If it doesn't look like this, then you're on the WAN. WAN. All right. So WAN is a Chinese built model that can generate both images and videos. It's similar to Kling and all the other top models. So similar to any of the ones that have sound and voices baked in right now. So let's go ahead and dive in and show you how this works. So on the left side panel here, you'll see some options and you'll click the generate option. And from there, it'll give you three main categories. It's going to give you video, image, and avatar. And obviously video is for video generations, images for image generations. But what we're going to want to use for this one is the avatar feature. So under avatar, there are three key options. One is speech to video, which is where you upload your image and audio and it creates a talking head. Then there's character swap, which replaces the person in your video with another face or character. And then there's a photo animate option. And this animates a still image using your performance video. And this one matches the Higgs field recast the closest. All right. So when I first tried it, I didn't know exactly what each one meant. So I tried the character swap first and I used this over the shoulder image from my The Life of the Lazy Mom project that I'm working on. If you follow me on TikTok, you might know a little bit about this, but it's one of the projects that I'm working on in the background. But I took this shot to see if I could bring one of the other characters to life. And this character is looking at my character, the character of young me or whatever, and given the lines, but I wanted to see how realistic I could get his speaking lines. So I've been doing a deep dive on all this lately, and this actually was released while I was doing a deep dive on this part of it. So I decided to test it out. So what I did was I uploaded the target video and my character image. And like I said, it was a front facing portrait and it has to have one visible face and it ran fine. And the thing about it is that I had some credits left over from my other projects. So I just ran it with those credits. But later on, I realized that you can actually generate even with zero credits and see like right here, because in one of the options it shows do you want to use credits or not use credits? But then it just warns you that processing may be slower if you're not using credits. So they're clearly letting users experiment for free right now, at least when this video is being made. So I went ahead and ran it and this is what I got. Bro, you still look drunk. Like you look like you, got, you look like you got in a fight with a liquor store and the liquor store won. Man, I heard you come in at sunrise. You sound like a rhino on meth. Ridiculous. So I didn't know the settings before going into this. So this is obviously not what I was going for because I was going for something to compare to the Higgs field recast feature. So what it did was it swapped the character that I gave it directly into my background, replacing me. Not what I was going for, but it's still pretty impressive that this is actually a thing that can be done right now. So this one was generated using standard mode and the lip syncing wasn't great. And this was kind of what I was getting when I was using runway. I don't know. The lip syncing was okay, but not quite what I wanted it to be. And to be fair, I could have been using it wrong. Let me know in the comments if there's a special way that you're supposed to use runway in order to get better results, but I wasn't getting great results and it was pretty expensive. So I just kind of paused on it. But then later on, I found out that there actually is a pro mode on this. And I went ahead later on to use that pro mode to see the difference and the quality improved. But here's the thing. After about 10 seconds, the realism started to fall apart. The face drifts, the lighting softens, and the model starts to look more cartoony, I guess you'd say. So that's a kind of a common theme here. If you look at the first clip that I did, the same thing happens. For the first five seconds or so, it's great realism or pretty decent realism for where we are in, with this technology. And then at five to 10, it's still pretty good. But then after 10 seconds, it really starts to break down. So this is something to keep in mind when you're making these, that the longer they get, the more they fall apart. And that just kind of happens to be how it is with a lot of these video generators in general. 
which is one of the reasons why everybody's like, well, why can't I get, you know, a 30 second video, a one minute video, a two minute video is because they can, but this is what happens. Things start to degrade. They start to hallucinate. They start to get a whole bunch of artifacts in there and it doesn't really work out, but it's getting there and it's going to be crazy what we're going to be seeing in the next few months, six months, a year. All right. So after that, I wanted to try the other option, which is photo animate. And this is the one that I figured out mirrors what Hicksfield Recast does. It's the same setup. You upload the video and you upload the character image. But as you see, it takes me completely out of the equation, just my movements and my voice and portrays them through the character that was set on here. So basically the picture comes to life, but using my amazing acting skill. Bro, you still look drunk. Like you, look like, you got, you look like you got in a fight with a liquor store and the liquor store won. Man, I heard you come in at sunrise. You sound like a rhino on meth. Ridiculous. So it's very similar to the other ones. For the first few seconds, look at the image. It looks great. It looks sharp, expressive. It's pretty believable. It's not perfect. We know that it's not quite there yet, but it's believable. And then the same story around the eight second mark, the realism drops fast and the AI at one point, the character starts randomly grabbing this glowing glass and then it melts into smoke and all kinds of crazy stuff happening. So that's what they're talking about. It can go for 15 seconds, but should you go for 15 seconds? Maybe not. So then I went ahead and moved on to speech to video. And this one is the most like Hey Jen's Avatar 4 from what I'm seeing. Here you can upload a still image and an audio file, or it says you can extract it from your video. And you have a couple of different options for the output, which is 480p or 720p. So what I did for this one was in CapCut, I extracted my dialogue from the video clip, and then I ran it through a voice changer just to test it out, to see if you sound better or different with this. So that's, this is what we get. Go ahead and check it out. Bro, you still a drunk. You look like you got in a fight with a liquor store and the liquor store won. And heard you come in at sunrise. You sound like a rhino on meth. Ridiculous, bro. All right. So with this one, it only animates the head and the face. There's not a lot of motion outside of that. See, and you can actually look at the over the shoulder character. My character with the dreadlocks, he stays frozen, which is another difference between this one and the photo animate option. Because in the photo animate option, he actually is moving in the background. He's actually moving in the background. You can see it right there. So I ran a few more tests and outside of my amazing acting or questionable at best, I guess we should say, things got a little strange. There were some mismatched skin tones. I had the old Michael Jackson hands, but the early Michael Jackson face, a whole bunch of weird stuff going on. But the good thing is that you can test these out for free right now. So I would get in there, see how it goes. You're going to have to wait a while for the generations on the free tier, but at least you get to test it out and see how it works. Uh, yeah, I I know, bro. I feel like the devil's butthole if he ate two orders of jalapeno poppers and bottom shelf tequila all night. What happened to you anyways? What happened to you anyways? Where did you end up last night? So I'm going to dive in a lot deeper to this tool because I really like where this is going and especially for telling my stories to have more control over how the characters act and move and speak. I mean, I have to work on my personal acting in order to make it work out right. But that's another story for another time. All right, so here's what I learned comparing Hicksfield Recast with WAN 2.2 directly. So Hicksfield is most likely using the WAN 2.2 engine for a lot of what they're doing over there. And you can let us know in the comments if you know more than me about this, about how they're set up and what is under the hood. But I'm pretty sure it's WAN 2.2 with some other tools integrated. So for the quality, I'm going to vote for Hicksfield Recast. It seemed like it was better quality and better lip syncing. One 2.2 was good and great for, honestly, it's, it's all magic to me at this point that we can even do stuff like this, but it was good, but it seemed to degrade a lot faster. Hicksfield seemed to maintain the lip syncing and the character throughout the clip. So both of them, the maximum length is 15 seconds. When it comes to the voice options, Hicksfield had some built-in voices and they had that you could upload your own voice. One right now on their website, it was only uploading your own voice unless I missed something there, but that's all I was seeing. And there's another couple of cool options that Hickfield put in there, which is multi-languages and the custom background. So when looking at the credit costs, this was just a quick estimation and 
what I was seeing was that this nine second video, for example, the nine second video, it cost 39 credits, which with my math was right around $2. Double check that, but that's what I was seeing. And then for the one 2.2, same nine second video, it was 20 credits, which was around $1. So even if the math ain't mathing right there, the general point is that it is cheaper using one 2.2, but Higgsfield has added some other features in there. Plus, obviously they have to have a buffer on top. But the cool thing about using it on one 2.2 right now is that they do have some free options where you can get in there and you can test it out. So to summarize, I would say that Higgsfield is not just wrapping one 2.2. They've clearly added their own polish. From what I'm seeing, the lip syncing is tighter, the UI is pretty clean, and the voice and background integration, it gives it an extra edge. But fundamentally, yes, I think it's built on that same foundation. So you're basically paying Higgsfield for ease of use and better fine tuning. They're an aggregator website, meaning that it's like one of those all in ones where you can do a lot of things on one site without having to buy separate subscriptions. So when they bring in tools like this and they make it a little bit better or they just add a little bit on top and make the ease of use, I'm okay with it because, well, that's what these sites are here for. So honestly, this all points to where AI filmmaking is heading. See, one person can literally perform every role in a film. And this technology is here. And with this being open source, people are just going to build on top of it and make it even better, as you can see with Higgsfield. So this is both exciting and a little unsettling because while this gives creators total freedom, it also means that we're stepping into a world where you can't really trust what you see. We're already there, but this just adds another tool to that arsenal. But for independent filmmakers and solo creators, this is revolutionary and a step in the right direction. So what do you think? Is Higgsfield Recast really just one 2.2 in disguise? Is it a ripoff? Or is it the start of something bigger? Did they build something better on top of what's already there? Drop your thoughts in the comments. So if you made it this far, you're definitely one of the real ones and probably just as obsessed with all this AI video stuff as I am. We're at this crazy point where the tools are evolving faster than we can even test them. But that's why I do this, to dig into what's real, what's hype, and what actually helps creators tell better stories. If you wanna go deeper, I break down all this stuff in my newsletter. It's called AI for Real Life because this is AI for Real Life channel. And that's where I do the full tool tutorial breakdowns, my test results, the actual prompts I use, and all the behind the scenes experiments that don't quite make it into the videos. So if you like this kind of content, real test, honest takes, and occasional AI weirdness, hit that subscribe button here on YouTube and check the link in my description to join the AI for Real Life newsletter. I'll see you in the next deep dive.